<laughs> Thank you very much. Hi, John. Nice work with this group, especially integrating the what would be considered non-traditional material uh, and uh, the players, and then expanding on the written chart to include more players than the Ranger might have thought might have jumped into solo. I think that was really very nice. Guy. Well, okay. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> So, um, I, no, I'm just listening to this one performance, you know, I, I, I recognize that you've had, you know, as much practice time as you've had, and, and you know, you're coming to here and playing this one time, so there's a lot of stuff that was really good. Um, one of the, if I can just work backwards since you were just there, um, I think that when we're trading solos like that, it's good to not leave those little gaps in between your statements. It's okay to have some overlap. You don't have to go bop it a bit up, do 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 and come right in. If you listen to, you guys are like Troy, right? So we're down to the beat shop, you know, we listen to some of the stuff down there that he's got on vinyl. Uh, and, you know, he's got some great big band stuff in there. And just listen to what they did. They never just stopped on one. You know, they would they would lead into one, maybe end of four or four, taking an idea that the previous solos had just given them. And then they would develop that or add something brand new, and then the next person would and jump right in. Sometimes, I know the effect was great, because on the original recording, obviously it's all electronic, and the sense come in, and it gets bigger and bigger. And you were doing that same thing, but then those little moments of silence kind of deflated that build. And we had to start again, and then come back up. So, you know, make sure that that's something you consider when you're doing this. Uh, doing the piano solo. Nice job on the drums. You came down, so we could clearly hear the piano solo. Excellent. Your guitar solo was electric, you know, audible. But when you were um, playing as part of the ensemble, you looked like you were Marcel and yourself. I couldn't hear a thing. So make sure that if you are going to play a melody line that you with the ensemble, that we get that guitar timbre into what's happening in that. It's very, very nice. Uh, good. Okay, so this is my little... I'll leave this with you if you can read my handwriting, too, when I'm done. That's, that's fine. Um, nice. On Dreamsville, I really like the, you know, the solos coming out front. I'd like to encourage you to memorize that stuff. You know, when we go and see a band play and the soloist comes out front, I know that's a little bit of extra stuff. It's not just playing over a blues form or over rhythm changes. But it's, you know, it'd be nice to be able to add that to your, your repertoire for that. Um, when the rhythm section uh, was, was playing uh, before the, you came up front, you were great. But I didn't get a sense that you were aware that all of a sudden you were just backing up a single soloist. You were still playing like you were backing up the full big band. There was no change in level. It didn't open up. It didn't become airy. There wasn't a sort of a, I know you had that 16th note figure that you had to play, but still a, there wasn't a, a lightness um, that indicated, okay, now we're a small band. Probably the most challenging thing for rhythm section players in a big band is to realize that when the soloist comes up, you're now an intimate jazz quartet <coughs> in a club somewhere. And you've got to make that adjustment to sound like that, and then you can come back up. There was no change when the ensemble came back, and you were still at exactly the same level you were when the soloist. Now, after that, when you came down, that was great. So I know you can do it. It's a matter of looking at these, you know, nice opportunities for you to be able to come in and make that happen. There was, uh, you know, some intonation issues in the low end of Birdland at the beginning. Don't worry about that. You know, that'll come to the next performance. That'll be better. Um, ta -ta -da. Let's see. Uh, there was a really good full sound at 59 uh, in Dreamsville. That was excellent. I just wanted, that was very nice. It came up. It was rich. It was nicely balanced all the way through. I will say that in Dreamsville, there's places where... Uh, what did I have this? Before 13, there's places where um, there's ensembles that have half notes, like the lower parts have half notes and the upper parts have a moving line. The half notes are not nearly as important as the moving line, and I, I tended to hear the half notes much more than I heard the moving line. So if you're holding a note, like a half note, or even a dotted quarter note, and there's other people in your section that are moving, unfortunately that long note is not as important, even though it's easier to play. You, just, you got it. But if you can bring that down so the moving lines can come over on top of that, there'll be much more motion in the, in the ensemble. Nice matching of um, timbre in the front row here, my, my E-flat section. Oh, you're sticking in there B-flats in the front. Okay, that's fine. Good, good job. I thought you were in, the, in that back set. Um, and then, let's see, on the, uh, I know I'm trying to rush, I have a limited amount of time. So on the on cocktail, there's places where you have hits. At the end of a at the end of a of a phrase, like it's accented, but do da do da, and I'm not getting that second accented note. They sound kind of equal. Da 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 da
uh, the tempo just a little bit after the solo fills. The break would be do 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 I might suggest, and I say this to everybody, but to, to, to John as well, that uh, you might want to have, since you have so many chordal instruments, and, and you had a nice parade of soloists, nice different ideas, that you have a different rhythm section chordal instrument be the primary comper, rather than, than pretty much piano have that role all the way. We could have had, you know, vibes could have comped, guitar could have <coughs> come up and comped in that. It was especially challenging. You did a nice job on this. I don't know which piano, uh, when you came in from your solo, you just finished comping. And then you had to th rethink, and now you had to be the soloist. With that many rhythm section players, he could have had somebody else comping right prior to his solo. Come in and make that happen. That would have been really nice. That's really good. Uh, can we take the beginning of that? How much time do I have, by the way, back there? I can talk for a long time. <laughs> Three more minutes. Three more minutes. I love it. <laughs> yeah, can we just take the beginning of that? You know? Bah, Ah, make sure that those hits are just a little bit sparky. Okay? Ah, ah, one, two, one, two, three, and. We were like waiting for the person next to us. Ah, pretend you're the only saxophone playing. Don't don't make sure that the other person's with you. Is that they're not they're not coming up. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Ah, pretend you're the the rest of you guys come in later have that same sense. You're just gonna right there at the end of one or wherever that accent is. One, two, one, two, top hand. suitable for framing and putting in the band room for your participation in our <laughs> And the, uh, the team that was in the back, they always leave me to do this by myself, you know, they, they figure this out and then they say, you present it. So um, it's, you know, a nice band, a lot of good effort by uh, players and a, a lot of nice musicianship, but they have elected to give the outstanding, it's called the Berkeley College of Music Judge's Choice Award, to our uh, vibraphone player, Ben Grant. Thank <laughs> you. 